While studying photography at Pratt many years ago, I was first introduced to the work of early photographers from the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Their intention was to document the landscape and people of the time using this new invention that recorded but wasn't considered art. Photographers such as Carlton Watkins, Edward S. Curtis, and Eugene Atche succeeded in both documenting and creating hauntingly beautiful images in spite of the limitations of their materials available at the time. There is a stillness and rendering of light in these photographs that I love. I began photographing with large format view cameras that required long exposures and used antique lenses from that same period. The lenses sometimes didn't have a shutter and aren't coated the way modern lenses are. This helped me achieve the feeling I was going for in my images. Over the years, I photographed botanicals, portraits, and landscapes using equipment and techniques from that period. I'm interested in combining the past with present technologies to create a hybrid of the two. This exhibit is an overview of how my photographs have progressed and evolved over the past several years because of the influence of early photography. This photograph here is um, a photograph of poppies. Uh, that I painted with light. In the beginning, when I first started photographing with large format cameras and different techniques, I would paint my images with, with light. I would leave the shutter open for several minutes and then slowly go over the object with a high intensity or s very small flashlight. So in my dark room, I took glass, cleaned it, coated it with silver emulsion, and then printed on it the way I would print on paper. Um, the result is it creates sort of a translucent or transparent area in the highlights, which isn't that visible here because of the lighting. But this was one of the first pieces I did on glass. After doing this for a while, I decided I really wanted to also work in color. Um, and I also wanted to work bigger. So then I then researched and found a way to enlarge my color images and print them on transparent material very similar to the glass. But I was able to print them any size. This was one of the first pieces that I did this way. Um, I originally shot it. I'm going to show you the camera here. Um, I shot it with this 4x5 view camera. Fitted on this camera is a lens from either the late 1800s or early 20th century. Um, it's a barrel lens, so it doesn't have a shutter. I then was able to buy this, which is a separate shutter mechanism. Um, because the lens, like I mentioned before, isn't coated the same way that contemporary lenses are coated. It has a, it just renders light in a very, I find, beautiful way. Um, what I would do is I would shoot Polaroids with this camera. and. I'll show you in a minute the Polaroid back, but this was the Polaroid um, that I shot and that eventually I scanned and used to create that image there. This photograph um, was taken in my friend's garden, actually here in Westport. Um, she had a really amazing garden with all the sculptural shrubs, and I actually shot it with a toy camera, a Diana camera. Um, and then it's actually been transferred onto the plexiglass with the same method that was used for this image. So whereas I coated this with this glass with emulsion, these two were done differently. And here are three more pieces. Um, this botanical was painted with light using the 4x5 view camera, um, but shot on black and white negative film, but I, I coated the glass with emulsion, printed this in my dark room also. This also was, uh, I printed this in my dark room, coating the glass with silver emulsion. And this I shot actually right down the street where I live. It was a really foggy night. Um, and I actually painted the tree with light to, to bring out a little bit of detail. This is a transparency. It's a photograph of my daughter, Eva, when she was around nine, I think. Um, I also love the work of Julia Margaret Cameron, the Victorian photographer. And 
so I consciously photographed Eva in that style. Um, I used natural light, and, um, and because I, at the time, was photographing mostly botanicals, I incorporated the flower into the photograph. This is a photograph of a flower called Painter's Palette. And um, again, I photographed it with my view camera. And here's the original Polaroid that was scanned and that it was created from. I just love the texture and the color. This was shot with daylight. Not, it was not painted with light. This is a photograph of a clematis. And um, again, it was shot. this was shot on black and white film negative film, but using the view camera. Um, and this was shot with daylight and then transferred onto the transparent material. This piece um, is another piece that was, it's glass coated with silver emulsion and I printed it in the dark room. And this is a, I had gotten this huge um, bunch of poppies and some were open and some were closed and they're really wonderful and I spent like the whole day photographing them um, so here we have some open poppies closed poppies um, it has a kind of dramatic feel and then this piece is an anemone um, after the petals have fallen off and this I shot actually with the 4x5, but that was, this was shot on uh, black and white Polaroid film that has a negative, it's a positive negative film. And um, so you can see there's that Polaroid kind of residue around the side. Um, and this is printed on transparent material on plexiglass. I started doing portraits uh, last year and again, influenced by Julia Margaret Cameron. And um, I love using daylight. And here I, I used daylight and I shot it with my four x five view camera using a lens called a Verito lens. Uh, it was a lens from the early 20th century that was specifically designed for soft focus portrait photography. Um, and the larger the aperture, the softer the image. As you stop down, it becomes a sharper lens. So it adds to that kind of ethereal quality. That's my son, Sam. Um, and that was from a Polaroid. I, so I shot it on Polaroid and I scanned it. And then I actually printed it. Um, this is an inkjet print. Um, and I wanted to give it the quality of gum bichromate prints or some of those alternative processes, which I ended up doing a little later on. I'll show you. But um, so I created this border. Actually, at my friend uh, Kathy's studio, we, we created a border on her, um, on her press. Um, this image was, um, this was taken with a Holga camera, so a plastic toy camera. And this is emulsion on glass. I printed this in my dark room. There was this garden with ivy all over the trees, and I just love the texture. This piece was photographed um, with a toy camera again. This time it was the Diana camera, and, uh, and then printed on uh, inkjet paper. I scanned the negative and printed on inkjet paper. And again, this is part of the portrait series I did last year, um, you know, scanning the Polaroids. It's the Polaroid, the, the color is often kind of funky and not true to life. I, I retained a lot of that in my printing. Um, this is my friend Kathy. Um, we were at uh, Mill Pond in Fairfield, and uh, she was taking a photograph while I was photographing her. And this was shot with a Diana camera again and again scanned negative, printed on inkjet uh, watercolor paper. After playing with this, and here's another one that I did at Mill Pond um, with the Diana camera. I love that feeling of watercolor paper and the softness of it, so I wanted to explore that further. So I learned how to do um, platinum printing and um, borrowed an 8x10 view camera. <clears throat> 
with a really beautiful old lens in it and um, shot some uh, 8x10 negative film and then um, learned the process of platinum printing, coating watercolor paper with the emulsion and then making a contact print under UV lights. And so it, it's kind of a continuation of these photographs. This shows, this is a contact printer and here's the negative. So this is the size of the actual negative. The camera's quite large. It's like double the size of the other one. And um, what you do is you coat, the, after sizing the watercolor paper, you coat it with the emulsion, the platinum emulsion. Um, and this is a gum bichromate print. I, was, I mentioned that because you could either, sometimes I would coat it with the platinum or the gum bichromate. Let it dry, then put it in the contact printer with the negative on top of it and expose it to either sunlight or UV lamps and then wash it and this is the result. These are three of my newest pieces and these are, um, this one's platinum um, with gum over it and this is a gum bichromate print and this is a gum bichromate print that was scanned and then enlarged. Um, again, using this technique with the contact printer. These were taken at Mill Pond in Fairfield and this in the forest in some wooded area in Fairfield. Here are three of my portraits from the series. Um, again, this shows the portrait of Rebecca I photographed with my 4x5 on a Polaroid and then scanned the Polaroid and printed it. Um, kind of creating that Victorian kind of romantic photograph that I love to create. And this is a portrait of my son Andrew. Again, using the Polaroid and that late afternoon light and the soft lens. Here are two more portraits in the series created the same way as the others. Here are more photographs in my series of um, working with the toy camera. Uh, Mill Pond at, with the moon rising up. These two are both Mill Pond and these two were both photographed in uh, Los Angeles. I love the, the way this looks like a paw in the, uh, in the grass, or whatever that is, weed. Um, and I just love the way in LA everything like nature is taking over in certain parts. And here's a real combination. It, it kind of shows the whole evolution. You know, starting out with the emulsion on glass, then going to the transparency series, then going to the platinum printing. Just a little overview of the past 10 years. This image came from a Polaroid like the others, and again, shot on the 4x5, um, shot with daylight. Um, and then these two are part of the portrait series. I shot these on 4x5 black and white negative, and then they're contact printed, um, and they're both platinum prints. And what I love about the platinum prints is I love the middle range. The, the grays are just so beautiful. And again, very much in the style of Julie Margaret Cameron. And to end the show, these are the last two pieces. Um, again, Diana photographed, um, scanned negatives and printed on, on uh, watercolor paper. Um, yeah, the symmetry of this and uh, really attracted me. In the way the trees, you really see the trees in the water more so than in the sky. And this has kind of a swampy look, almost like it was photographed in the south, but it was actually photographed in Fairfield, Connecticut. Well, thank you. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I've been working on.